On this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have a new set of appropriateness use criteria, uh, this time on the use of ICD and pacemakers, and then two important trials, one from last week, the WOOST trial, looking at dual versus triple uh, antithrombotic therapy uh, in patients of stent and atrial fibrillation. And then finally, a very large and long-term primary prevention trial of the Mediterranean diet. So to begin with, we have published in Jack um, the appropriateness criteria for the use of various uh, devices, namely ICDs uh, and pacemakers and the dual chamber pacemakers. Um, quite amazingly, there are over 200 different potential indications that were rated by an expert panel as being appropriate, may be appropriate, or rarely appropriate, um, which is a nice little nuance on, on nomenclature there, acknowledging that sometimes patients don't quite fit text in a, in a table. Um, I think they cover secondary prevention of arrhythmic uh, events, VT, et cetera, sudden cardiac death um, that's resuscitated. Also primary prevention with a lot of the nuances of what is the ejection fraction, you know, less than equal to 35%, often the cut point. Um, then looking at um, uh, the QRS duration in terms of uh, whether uh, CRT should be used, et cetera. And so these criteria will be helpful. They found about 80% were appropriate or may be appropriate, and about 20% of the various indications rated as rarely um, appropriate. And so these will likely make its way into coding, and, and uh, so be on the watch for these new criteria. Next up, we have the WOOST trial. This was a study presented about uh, nine months ago and now published in Lancet that looked at the very vexing patient population of those with atrial fibrillation or other indication for anticoagulation and coronary stents and how to treat them with aspirin, clopidogrel, and anticoagulation or a novel approach here of just using clopidogrel without aspirin and anticoagulation. And as presented and now published, uh, they found, not surprisingly, a much lower risk, about a 60% or more reduction in bleeding when using dual antithrombotic therapy, clopidogrel and anticoagulation, as compared with triple therapy, but intriguingly, a lower mortality uh, as well. Now, the numbers of events were low. It was uh, seven deaths versus 18 deaths in the dual and triple therapy. And so in a study of 537 patients, this is very intriguing. And I think many of us will start considering double therapy in the very high risk for bleeding patients. But we look forward to potentially a larger trial uh, to follow. And at the number one spot is a... Um, unanticipated by me, but long-awaited uh, trial of primary prevention uh, with intervention of the Mediterranean diet. Now, this is very similar to the AHA diet with uh, lots of fruits and vegetables, r reduced intake of, of animal fat, more fish, um, and in this case, supplemented by either walnuts and other nuts uh, or olive oil as two different nuances on the Mediterranean diet as compared with a standard diet. This was done um, in Spain with uh, 7,447 uh, patients or subjects without known cardiovascular disease followed for five years. And they found a significant 30% reduction in development of cardiovascular events, um, including death, um, with following either of the two types of Mediterranean diet. Interestingly, a slight edge on the mortality uh, when supplementing with olive oil uh, in the Mediterranean diet. Um, and so something that uh, has long been debated makes a lot of sense, but now gives really grade A evidence uh, supporting a Mediterranean diet as a way to prevent cardiovascular disease. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.